When a sample beam is subjected to what we define as a positive moment, the deformed state of the beam will look like a smile. A negative moment will make the beam deform in the opposite way. In either case, we see that one side is under compression and the opposite side is under tension. If we look at the deformed beam under a somewhat exaggerated deformation, we can see that there's one plane that has not been stretched nor compressed, and that plane is what we call the neutral axis. The radius of curvature of a deformed beam is the radius from the center to the neutral axis. The neutral axis will serve as a point of reference for the distances in the y direction. The distance from the center of the radius of curvature to the plane that is found in compression would therefore be rho minus y. The strain for the length that is compressed at the top would be the change of length over the original length. The compressed length would be the length of an arc with angle theta and radius rho minus y. Remember that arc lengths can be calculated by multiplying the radius times the angle in radians. The original length L0 is the distance from A to B either in the undeformed or the deformed beam, since the neutral axis doesn't stretch or compress. So if we're looking at the deformed beam, it would also be the length of the arc for the radius that goes up to the neutral axis, meaning rho. Thetas cancel out and rows cancel out in the numerator, giving us a strain of minus y over rho. This strain equation is true for any value of y, and we know that the maximum strain would be found for the largest y value, which is the farthest distance from the neutral axis. This would either be at the top or at the bottom, and that max distance y is usually called c. Solving for rho in the maximum strain expression and substituting it in the strain equation, we see that the strain for any value y is equal to y over c times the maximum strain. If we multiply this equation by the elastic modulus of the material, we find that the stress is equal to y over c times the maximum stress. Let's perform a cut on this beam, which can be any beam with a random but constant cross-section area, and let's take a look at a zoomed-in version of a side view. Since we know that the point of reference for y is the neutral axis, we know that at y equal to zero, we would find the neutral axis. Since the neutral axis is not being compressed or stretched, we know that the strain is zero, and therefore the stress is also zero. As we move away from the neutral axis, meaning y is no longer zero, the stress increases linearly. We also know that for a positive moment, the top plane will be under compression, and the bottom plane will be under tension. If we look at an infinitesimal area that is located at the cut, we would see that that small area is subjected to a force df. If we multiply that force df by the distance to the neutral axis y, we would find the moment for that infinitesimal area. And notice that the direction of df is negative. If we add all of these infinitesimal moments, which means doing a surface integral or an integral over the area, we would find the total moment m. Since the stress is force over area, we can substitute df inside the integral with sigma times dA, and since sigma is a function of y, we also need to substitute it to explicitly show the integral in terms of y. Sigma max and c are constants and can therefore come out of the integral. Solving for sigma max, we find an expression that allows us to calculate the maximum normal stress due to bending in terms of the moment, the distance to the neutral axis, and what we call the second moment of area. This second moment of area is similar to the polar second moment of area that we studied in the torsion stress video. Link below if you need a refresher. The difference here is that we're using Cartesian coordinates instead of polar coordinates, hence the name of J. Many of the cross-section areas of beams, even the more complex ones, can be obtained by putting rectangles together. So let's find the second moment of area of a simple rectangle of base B and height H as an example. If we want the second moment of area about the x-axis of the centroid in y, or the neutral axis, we would substitute our area integral as two integrals, one for x and one for y, where the limits for x are 0 to b, and the limits for y minus h over 2 to h over 2. Notice that all we're doing here is rewriting the infinitesimal area dA as a dx times dy, and using integration limits that will cover the entire area. The integral of dx is just x evaluated from 0 to b, which is just a constant b outside of the integral. The integral of y squared is y cubed over 3, evaluated between minus h over 2 and h over 2. This yields 1 over 12 times b times h cubed. Notice that this expression is different if we find the second moment of area with respect to the bottom or the top of the rectangle. 
The integral limits for y would be 0 to h, which would change the evaluation and yield 1 third bh cubed. So always be very careful when using either expression. This distinction is very important when using the parallel axis theorem to find the overall second moment of area. The parallel axis theorem is what we will use to find the second moment of area of cross-section areas that are made up by adding shapes together. Shapes of which we already know their second moment of area expressions. For example, a T-shaped cross-section area beam. The T-shape can be obtained by adding two rectangles together. What the parallel axis theorem states is that the I at the neutral axis, which is what we need for our normal bending stress expression, can be calculated if we know the expression for the second moment of area of a shape and the distance from the neutral axis to the centroid of the shape. And how do we get here? Well, the second moment of area for which we have the known expression, for example the 1 over 12 bh cubed we just derived, is the expression for I about the centroid for that shape. In this case, the rectangle, but it can be any shape of known second moment of area. If we try to find the second moment of area about another axis that is parallel to the axis that passes through that centroid, found at a distance d, we would be calculating a new second moment of area, and the y squared would be replaced by a y minus d squared. Distributing the square, distributing the integrals, and taking out the constants from each integral, we see that we need to identify what the integral of y dA is. Since the centroid of an area is defined as 1 over area times the integral of y dA, and if you need a refresher on this, there's a centroids video linked below, we also know that the centroid distance from the centroid, which is where we started this derivation from, is 0. But 1 over area cannot be 0. Then it means that the integral of y dA is the term that has to be equal to 0. Continuing on our main expression and knowing that the second term is zero, we see that the second moment of area about the new axis, any new axis, is equal to the second moment of area expression we know, which is usually about the centroid, plus the area times the distance between axes squared. And that's it. If we want to find the second moment of area about the neutral axis, which is what we use in our bending stress equation, all we need to find is the distance between axes the neutral axis and the axis that passes through the centroid or any other point of reference of our known I shape. For the T-shape beam example, the overall second moment of area we would need to find stresses would be found by adding the I's from the two rectangles together, remembering to account for the distance between the neutral axis and the centroids of each rectangle. The steps would be to find the neutral axis first, which is finding the overall centroid of the cross section, finding the distances to both individual centroids, and substituting the values for b and h for each rectangle. At the end of this video, you'll find an example where we use this information. Now, going back to what was stated earlier, if we're using 1 over 12 bh cubed, it's because we are using the centroid of the rectangle to calculate the second moment of area. So it makes sense that d in the parallel axis theorem equation is the distance from the neutral axis to the centroids. But if we use 1 third bh cubed instead, we are using the base as the reference to get that second moment of area. And therefore, in that case, d would be the distance from the neutral axis to the base of the rectangle. The general recommendation is to always find d between the neutral axis and the centroid, and just use the i expression about the centroid of that shape. The last concept to point out here, even though this should already be known from a prerequisite course like statics, is that the neutral axis is just the overall centroid of the cross-section area. That centroid can be obtained by using the discrete sums of the centroid times the area of each shape over the total area. For examples on how to do this, please check the two links in the description of this video that read centroids of complex areas. Going back to the stress equation, we see that in general, sigma is equal to minus my over i, which is the general equation for a normal stress due to bending. For any value y from the neutral axis, you can find the normal stress with this expression. This is helpful to understand that you don't need to find the maximum value c, but you can move upward or downward from the neutral axis to find the compressive or tensile stress at the top or bottom plane. Let's put everything we learned here today into practice with a simple example. And remember that there are more complex, normal stress due to bending examples from this main video linked in the description below. 
Two vertical forces are applied to a beam of the cross-section shown. What are the maximum tensile and compressive stresses in portion BC of the beam? Remember to try this on your own before watching the solution up next. To find these normal stresses due to bending, we will use the expression we developed today. The moment value for section BC can be easily found by finding the reactions at A and D and plotting shear and bending moment diagrams. If you need a refresher on those, there's also links to a shear and bending moment diagram main video. The value for Y is the distance from the neutral axis to the top or the bottom. One of them will make the sigma expression become positive, meaning we have tensile stresses, and one of them will make it negative, meaning a compressive stress. This means that we need to find the location of the neutral axis first. And to find the second moment of area, we also need to find the neutral axis. Like stated before, finding the neutral axis of any cross-section area means finding the overall centroid for that cross-section area. The centroid is the distance value from whatever point of reference we choose, so we use the base as a datum in this case. We will multiply the distance to the centroid of each shape times its area over the total area. This is just a regular process to find the overall centroid of any complex shape, which for bending scenarios we call the neutral axis. Knowing the neutral axis location from the datum, we can find the distance from the neutral axis to the top and the bottom, and those will be our y values to calculating the stresses. With the neutral axis location, we can also find the distance to the individual centroids of each rectangle to find the values for d1 and d2 that we would use in our parallel axis theorem equation. The overall second moment of area is equal to that of the first rectangle plus that of the second rectangle. With b equal to 9 and h equal to 2 for the first rectangle, and b equal to 3 and h equal to 6 for the second rectangle, and d1 being minus 2 and d2 being 2, we find the overall second moment of area, about the neutral axis. If we substitute a positive moment and i, which is always positive, the y distance to the top from the neutral axis, which is also positive, will give us a negative stress equal to minus 14.71 ksi. This makes sense because for a positive moment like this, the top surface is under compression. With the same values, only this time y being the distance from the neutral axis to the bottom, meaning a negative value, sigma is equal to positive 8.82 ksi. And again, it makes sense. The bottom is under tension. For more examples and the other main videos from the Mechanics of Materials course, please check the links in the description below. Thanks for watching.